what kind of relationship do you have with your father? your real father? it's often ambivalent, right? because there was an element of him that encouraged you, hopefully because without the encouragement of your father, man, the world is a dismal place it's very difficult to be a courageous person unless you have your father in, in body and spirit behind you, it's very de demoralizing like, it really kills people not to have their mother, they just don't recover from that but, and, and I think people can recover from a fragmented father relationship, but it's the next worst thing you know, because if your father rejects you, or doesn't form a relationship with you, it's as if the spirit of civilization has left you outside the walls as of little worth it's very difficult for people to recover from that so the father should be an encouraging force, but can be a tyrannical and crushing force and so that's very, that's a very difficult thing to get right, partly because if you're my son, then I should impose the highest standards of behavior on you and I should always be judging what you're doing I should be judging it with, with the aim of making the best in you come forward but, but getting that balance exactly right is very difficult and so it's easy to, for a father to swing too much into judgment, let's say and then of course mothers can play this role too to swing too far into the domain of judgment and to be too harsh and to the degree that the father has his own pathologies he's going to do that imperfectly you know, he might be someone who's who's uh, the father who devours his son because he's jealous of the new possibility, the new potential the, the struggle for, for uh, attention and love from the mother or from the other children in the family there's all sorts of things that can go terribly wrong so that's the father as wise king and that's another symbol that's been lost, I would say, to a massive degree in modern universities because all we're taught is to tear that down and, and to not even notice that it manifests itself everywhere, especially in the universities, which are like they're as close to an ideal environment as you could, as human beings have ever been able to create. It's as simple as that. And if you can't be grateful for, for the structure of the university with all its imperfections, then, then you're completely blind to this element of the archetype. And that's the opposite of it. That's the son that devours the king that devours his own son. That's a tyrant. You know, that's like the mother who's too overprotective, it's the male version of that and the mother that's too overprotective says, I'll never let anything happen to you it's like, well maybe you actually want to have something happen to you you know, it's a bit of an all-inclusive statement it's like, no, I'm going to make you strong so any number of things can happen to you and when, you're, when you need some care, I'll be there, but otherwise, like out into the world with you that's the right attitude, and for the father, it's like, get your bloody act together but I'm on your side, it's because not because I want to destroy you or demean you or push you down in the dominance hierarchy but because I want the best in you to emerge and so you need standards, it's like, what are you doing wasting your life? there's way more than that to you get your act together and, and bring it out and that's a message that people really want to hear if they have any sense at all and generally they do want to hear it so, you know I was talking, I've been talking to a lot of people recently as, as per perhaps you know and I was talking to one of the leaders of the conservatives this morning and they're, they're asking me about, the person was asking me about Bill C-16 but more specifically about talking to young people because the conservative leadership struggle is going on right now, I've been talking to a bunch of them and I said, well look, one of the things you could do for young people that no one's doing is to talk to them about responsibility because you know, everyone talks to young people about rights it's like, we need our rights, it's like, oh god how many rights do you need? you know, really, like you have more privileges than any people who've ever lived anywhere well, it's so dull to hear, it's so dull, it's so pathetic and, and uh, what would you call it, it's so demeaning that you have to be protected and have your rights, it's like I said, there's a huge marketplace for responsibility that's what you want to talk to young people about, it's like, get your act together and do something worthwhile with your life for the first time in my entire adult life, the conservatives actually have something to sell young people, right? they can sell them responsibility it's like, well why? because that's where me life has meaning with responsibility the more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has and the the higher degree of responsibility that you agree voluntarily to try to bear, the richer your life will be and no one's ever told that, and it's the case you know, it's like you have, you have four kids, say, 
Well, that's plenty of responsibility. You're going to have meaning. It's going to be rough, you know, because it's complicated. You have a complicated job and you try to help the careers of the people around you. You try to solve tough problems and aid suffering and do all of that. It's like, it's weight. It's responsibility, but it's, there's glory in it, there's real glory in it, there's deep meaning in it and, and, and young people are starving for that because no one ever tells them that It's like, you're way more than you think, man, stand up, do something difficult Do something difficult and heroic, right? Burst out of your bonds It's like, that's a good message It's a necessary message Because we have to be more than we are, because if we if we aren't, we're not going to survive.